let's just jump in here with some basic syntax. I want to talk to you in this video, real high level stuff, what it looks like, what the syntax is, what is different about a stored procedure than say a view or a function, how to rewrite views and functions to be stored procedures. Okay, let's, I know that's a lot of stuff. So let's get us a piece of paper here and can I get some room to write on. So stored procedures are executed. So this is different from say a view. You select from a view or you insert, update, or delete through a view. Nope, not what you do with stored procedures. You execute a stored procedure. You remember the syntax that we did in our uh, little presentation? We had something like, I think it was get member, uh, where we said this was the idea. We execute, and we just say exec as an abbreviation. Either one will work. You can fully type it if you want. Okay? So that means stored procedures cannot be used in a select statement. Another way to write that is you cannot select from a stored procedure. You can execute the stored procedure, but you cannot select from it. However, stored procedures can, I'm just going to abbreviate now uh, stored procs, and I'll, I'll probably abbreviate that to SPs in a minute, can return data to the caller. Okay, so the person that executes it, the process that executes the stored procedure is the caller or the client, whichever one you're more comfortable with uh, using there, almost interchangeable terms in this case. So you just have to execute. So here, let's just do a basic syntax. I'm going to use the Learn It First database, and I'm going to just kind of look through. It's been a while. I can't really remember what we've done in uh, all these things. We had a dem member view. So let's take a look at this view. I'm going to script that view as an alter so that we can just see what it is. I mean, literally, I, I don't remember. It's got to be fairly basic, though. Uh, we did this back in our chapter, what was it, chapter 4, I think, when we were doing views. So here is a view. And when we go to use that view, we would say select whatever from dim member. And we could put in where clauses, where member ID uh, greater than 5. We can order by... Uh, password hint ID or you know whatever and I'm going to alter this just to so that we get rid of the red squiggly there uh, let me take that out that was an exercise step I think uh, let's get this I got too much stuff in here I'm, I'm trying to keep it concise here a view if you remember is just nothing more than a single select statement okay that's really all you can put in a view a view that that is the definition. It is a single select statement. That's all it can be. It returns data. That's its entire functionality. Now we can insert, update, and delete through views. We talked about that. Okay? But by and large, we think of a view as a single select statement. Stored procedures have no rules like that. A stored procedure could be 50 statements or one statement. Uh, we can have the only thing, okay, I'll say this, the only gotcha, I'm, I'm kind of struggling to think of the right word here, is that go is the instruction that says the stored procedure is over. Gosh, that's such a weird way to say that. <laughs> it's the terminator, right? That's what it is. It's the stored procedure terminator. So any other code is fair game in that stored procedure. So I, I could rewrite this view. Watch this. I'll uh, just do this. I'll say create proc or create procedure, if you prefer, dbo dot get members as, there must be already a get members in the database. I, I think I need to change that. That's probably what it's telling me. So let me just change this to get all members, just so I don't have a naming clash. And here's what I'm going to do. Now I could do this. I could say select all from dbo.dim member. Okay. Sure, I could do that. Okay. 
and I can actually think of a reason that I might wish to do this. Okay, because remember that views you can't put an order by inside the view definition unless it also con contains a top. My view doesn't have a top, so I couldn't have put an order by. So I could do this very well. I could say something like order by last name, right? Okay. And now whenever somebody were to execute this stored procedure, they would get this data ordered by last name. So this should tell you something. Inside your stored procedure, you can call views, functions. So I could do something like, um, you know, upper last name as UL name. Okay. So I'm calling functions. I can call scalar functions. I can call table valued functions. I can even call other stored procedures. Okay. Now, <coughs> excuse me. If I wanted to truly rewrite a view as a stored procedure, then I certainly wouldn't include the view, right? So let's just call this one how to rewrite. And so I'm just going to take that view's definition, copy, and I'm going to paste it as the definition to my stored procedure. I'm not going to make any changes. And I'm going to go ahead and X and I'm going to issue this statement, the create procedure. Okay. Get all members. Now to call this, I cannot say select all from dbo.get all members. Notice it's not even in the IntelliSense. It's not there. It's smart enough. SQL is smart enough. The IntelliSense knows that I can't do that. I must execute dbo.get all members. And now it shows up. Okay, and so you can see it's a stored procedure. So I execute get all members. I cannot use it as part of a select statement, okay, but it does return a result set. A stored procedure can return result sets. And really there's no limit to the number of result sets that it could return. There's going to be some sort of a functional limit. I mean, you're not going to be able to You'd have too many uh, that you'd return. I think that after 32, it will throw an error by default. Uh, but we're returning a single result set. And let me ask you this. Okay, this is a really, really critical question here. What's the difference between this result set and the result set that came from querying the view? Nothing. They're both result sets, right? To the caller, the end result, what they asked for, hasn't changed. It's simply how they asked the question. When they wanted to query the view, they had to write a select statement. Select all from my view, order by, blah, blah, blah. When they want to get the data from the stored procedure, it's an execute statement. And they just have to know the name. Now, we could further modify our stored procedure with the alter proc. You have to completely rewrite it. And we can include the order by. So now I could order by something like uh, last name, comma, first name. Now this is not something by default, like we said, that we could have done in a view. This is one of those logical weird things. In the SQL world, the view represents a result set that is immediately consumable. Therefore, it cannot have an order to it. There is no order to the rows. However, a stored procedure is treated differently, and yet we can have an order. And so now I have the order. And you can see all the goofy names that we had. <laughs> right? So this is two, because two sorts before C. Okay? And then P R S T W. Right? All right, so that's the basics of the syntax here. Now, let's finish out with this. Okay. If the stored procedure is the first command in the batch, exec is not required. Okay. Like, let, let me go ahead and put a go up here so that we can just kind of start with a, a fresh piece right here. So I'm just going to say dbo.getAllMembers. Notice I didn't, sorry, I didn't have to say execute or exec because this is the first 
command in the batch. If it is not the first command in the batch, exec is required. So here, exec not required. Come on, Scott. But I will get an error message here. Now I'm getting the red squiggly because SQL Server has not, or Management Studio has not refreshed the IntelliSense. So if I come up here and tell it to edit IntelliSense, refresh the cache, those will go away. It will see that those are now objects. Right? So now requires exec. So these, when I highlight them, this one gets executed in its own batch. Don't get tripped up because if I do this, only the highlighted portion gets executed, right? So now that is one batch. Only this part went. And it's the first statement in the batch, so therefore it succeeds. But if I run both of them together, I get a syntax. I get the syntax error right here because it's expecting an exec. As soon as I put an exec in here, and so I'll just copy this, get all members, and then exec ddo.get all members, these will work. It will generate two result sets right there, top and bottom. Okay. Best practice, just to let you know, best practice slash standard way of doing things is to always use exec in production code. You know, sometimes when we're playing around, we don't always use exec. Okay. But it's very important to understand how to call the stored procedure. Now, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and stop here. I want to come back in the next video and talk about how we can add parameters in to our stored procedures.